All right, we are cooking with the GoPro again, and today we are making top ramen. And the reason we're making top ramen, something that seems obvious to everybody else in the world but actually isn't, is because I walked in on my roommate eating ramen, uh, just the noodles. And he was pissed off, and he goes, no wonder these things are 12 cents a piece, you need to eat like 30 of them to get filled up. I was like, dude, you gotta make a broth with them. He was just eating the noodles with the flavoring on it. And so it occurs to me that there's a lot of college students out there for the first time cooking ramen that isn't in a cup that you just pour water in and put in the microwave for three minutes. They actually have to make do with ramen like this. And they don't know how to do it, and they don't know how to do it pretty healthily either. Because uh, a little newsflash is that ramen is awful for you. All it is is freeze-dried carbohydrates and salt. This is just a big packet of salt right here, which is the flavoring. And if you just eat that, you're going to have a bad time. So we're going to do a little bit extra to this ramen today. Uh, what we're doing right now is boiling water. You can see when the water is bubbling like that, it's boiling. Just put that off. And that's when you want to put in your noodles. So just drop them right in there. If you're really scared about dropping things into a pot of boiling water, get a... Can I find it in here is a question. Uh, yeah, you just get a spoon like this. I prefer a slotted spoon like this, actually, now that I see it. Put your noodles in it, like that, and just lower them in. That's if you're afraid to go near boiling water, which a lot of people are. All right, so that's going to boil up in about three minutes. And in the meantime, we're going to do our own thing with the ramen. And that is, make it a little bit better for you. And by that, we're going to put protein in it. And what's the best type of protein for ramen? An egg. Just a single egg that you're going to fry up in a pan. Not all the way, you want to let it finish in the broth, because the broth will overcook it. Get that quick little push down. I always like using slotted spoons, because if you use a slotted spoon when you're cooking soup or pasta or something like that, it just lifts the pasta out and leaves the water. So you don't have to get water everywhere. The other good way to put protein in it is peanut butter. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So in the meantime, I'm going to put some vegetables in it too. And we're going to use a Santuco knife. This is what Santuco looks like. It's got the little divots. That's so when you're cutting the vegetable, it falls off. It doesn't stick to the knife. Um, you don't have to use a Santuco if you don't want to. I'm not going to force you. Cook any way you want to cook. That's a good message. So we're just going to take a little piece of onion off here. Just enough for flavoring. Let's get a bowl too. Uh, that. Nice loud sounds. That's the boiling. Let's pet our dog on the head. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, I fucking love you. Oh, you. Hey, Gio. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you. All in one take. Yeah. Oh, doggy cam. Love it. Oh, my God. Wow. I get to see these guys about once a week now, which sucks. That's still boiling. It's almost done. Take your onion, dice it up, short strokes. When you're dicing something or you're cutting something near your fingers, look at your fingers. Don't cut your fingers. You see, you want to use your fingers as a guideline. A lot of professional chefs put their knuckles against the blade like this and then chop with it. I don't like that. I've actually chopped the tips of my fingernails doing that. Just put your fingers a little bit away and watch them out. Watch out for your fingers, people. So put your onions in there. I also have some green onions. Green onions, you actually eat this part, as well as this part, but a lot of people for some reason cut off this part and just throw it away. I don't understand that. That's like what you eat. Take this. Nice little dicing action. This too, not, I like green onion, put that in there. All right, 
put that off to the side. Now I believe our noodles are done. And the way you test if noodles are done, give them a quick little stir like this, feel them. If they feel like they're, you know, still hard, then they're not done. Like if you push against them and you get some resistance, they're not done. You can also take them out like this. Take a noodle. It's going to be boiling hot water. Sorry. This is the way you test it. Damn it, I can't even pick these up. There we go. I'm going to say about like 20 more seconds. So in the meantime, now that our pan's hot over there, I'm going to take a little thing of butter. Throw it on in the pan and let it sizzle down. It's good to coat the pan, but since I'm only making one egg, I only have to coat one side of it. Like that. Take your egg, crack it on a flat surface. The reason you do this is because you don't want shell in the pan. And you crack it nice and close to the pan so the yolk doesn't break. And you throw it away and wash your hands real quick. That'll cook pretty fast. A little bit too fast for my liking. I like to uh, cook this when the ramen's done, but the timing's almost there. So what we're gonna do, put your bowl in the sink. Take your noodles out with a spoon, the slotted spoon, and drip them in like that. And then fill up the rest with your broth. That's enough right there. I still got some noodles left in there. That. That. Put it off the heat. I do not need the vent fan on right now. Thank you, computer. Uh, some noodles touch the sink. I don't like touch. I don't like eating anything that touches the sink. This thing's going to be one of the grossest parts in your house. Even grosser than your toilet lid. People don't realize that. Sinks. Damn it. Sinks. Um. Just retain bacteria. So when your egg's like this, you want to take it out. Because it's going to finish the rest of the way in the, um, in the soup. I'm actually going to leave it there really quick because I want to mix the beef flavoring in. Put your flavoring in. Now a lot of people don't like mixing peanut butter and eggs. I don't care. It's double protein. I think it tastes pretty good. So I'm going to do that. And the way you mix in your peanut butter right here is you just take a scoop with a spoon and you put it right in the hot broth. And the hot broth will melt the peanut butter off your spoon like that. And then you just got to stir it really quick. Short little concise stirs like this. Because if you stir all around it's going to slosh. You just want to do this. Just enough to whisk it. Back and forth. And then you take your egg and you slide that on in there. It doesn't look very presentable, but whatever. Um, and then you're done. So before, this was just soup with salt in it. Now it's soup with an egg and some peanut butter and some green onion and some red onion. It looks a little bit better. It tastes a little bit better. It's not how you should cook ramen. You can cook however the fuck you want. I really don't care. But it's just a good way to do it, to be a little bit healthier. Don't make your diet only ramen, but if you need to eat it, it's good. And it's good for a hangover which I have right now. So that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm going to think of something else to cook next time. Have a good one.